In the previous modules, we created a schematic symbol library and a PCB footprint library. The symbols were then associated with the corresponding footprints. These libraries, which we refer to as source libraries, can be compiled into a single library called an integrated library. Besides portability, integrated libraries will avoid broken model links caused by folder renaming and is also more secure since it cannot be easily modified. Since it is created through compiling an integrated library project, the source libraries within it will also be checked for integrity and highlight errors, such as incorrect pin to pad mappings or missing footprints. Let's be sure to start with a fresh environment by closing all documents and projects. We will then create a new integrated library project and save it to our desktop. We will now add the source libraries created in the previous modules by right-clicking on the project and selecting Add Existing to Project. If you do not see the libraries here, most likely it is because the filter is not set correctly. Ensure to set it to All Files and look for the libraries again. Hold the Shift or Control key to select both the schematic library and the PCB library created on the desktop earlier. We will now save our integrated library project and compile it. Notice upon compilation, the Messages panel will pop up, highlighting some errors that were deliberately caused behind the scenes earlier. Like in a PCB design project, double-clicking on the message will bring us to the area which caused the violation. In this case, pin 1 and pin 2 in the symbol currently do not have its pad 1 and pad 2 in its footprint. As mentioned earlier, pin designators and pad designators must be an exact match. As you can see, the pad designators are A1 and A2 in the footprint. We will change the pads A1 and A2 back to 1 and 2 in order to match the pin designators. Note that as an alternative method, the pads in the footprint can remain as A1 and A2, but the pin mapping within the schematic library must be changed. Once they have been changed to pads 1 and 2, we can compile the project again. Once again, we will recompile the project, and we should now see that the compilation is successful without any errors. Upon compilation, the integrated library will be created. This integrated library file can be found in the project folder in a subfolder called Project Outputs. This is the single file which contains all its symbols and footprints within its source libraries. Let's return to Altium Designer and close all projects and documents. In the Components panel, we will click on the button with the three bars and then select File-based library preferences. In the following dialog, we will go to the Install tab. As seen on this list, the generated integrated library was automatically installed upon compilation. If we set the integrated library as the active library, we will see the symbols and corresponding footprint previews within this panel. Let's now try placing these components into a new project and transfer it to the PCB document. Once again, we will create a new project, save it to our desktop, and add a schematic and PCB document. We will then save the project and place the components. Transferring the design to the PCB document will then bring in its corresponding footprints from the integrated library. On occasion, symbols and footprints need to be modified. The schematic of PCB documents that use them must also be updated to use the new head revision of the symbols and footprints. Let's take a look at this. To modify a symbol library, we will simply open it up and select the symbol we would like to modify. We will then perform a modification, such as adding a text on a capacitor as a proof of concept. We will then save the schematic library and close it. 
Notice that when the schematic is set as the active library in the components panel, the capacitor symbol has been updated to reflect the change. However, in an integrated library, the capacitor symbol remains without the updated text. This is because for integrated libraries, the integrated library project must be opened and recompiled to obtain a new integrated library with the modifications. We will return to this topic later in this module. Modifying a PCB library is like how it is done in a schematic library. We will first open the PCB library and choose the footprint to modify. Then perform a simple modification, such as adding a text on the capacitor footprint. We will then save the PCB library and close it. Once again, notice that when the schematic library is set as the active library, the capacitor footprint has been updated to reflect the change. However, our integrated library remains as not having the newly added text. As mentioned earlier, in order to update the integrated library, we would have to recompile this project with the modified source libraries. A new integrated library with updated symbols and footprints will then be generated from the compilation. First, let's reopen its project. Then, let's perform a compile of the project. Upon compilation, a new integrated library will be created and saved in the same subfolder called Project Outputs within the Project folder. Our Components panel will also see the capacitor symbol and footprint in the integrated library and will be updated to reflect the changes made previously. Let's close the integrated library project. Our symbols and footprints within the design documents remain unchanged. To update them in the schematics, we will go to Tools, Update from Libraries. Here, we can choose to do a full replace of the symbols and then click Next, followed by Finish. We will then execute the changes. The capacitor symbol should now have the additional text. As for our PCB document, we will go to Tools, Update from PCB Libraries. We will click OK. In this window, it will show the footprints that are out of date from its libraries and allow us to update these unmatched footprints. Once again, we will create the ECO and execute the changes. The capacitor's footprint should now have the additional text. In this module, we saw how an integrated library can be created, installed, and used. We also learned how to update the integrated library with modified symbols and footprints. Please complete the exercise Integrated Libraries, and this concludes the Altium Designer Essentials Training.